the big ideologies, let's say liberalism with Fukuyama, end of history, Marxism, even if they were not perfectly determinist, they thought history has a direction. It may go wrong, we may destroy ourselves, but there is a direction, no? For example, Rosa Luxemburg, no, said the future will be socialism or barbarism. What was her mistake? Well, in Stalinism we discovered it can be both <laughs> at the same time, no? And, but today, I think the situation fits perfectly the notion of superpositions in quantum physics. We live in a moment where we cannot draw one line, that's it. We are in a situation where, on the one hand, we have the remainders of this that we share, me and Lorenzo, progressive enlightenment European dream. Then we have it's something very different, this right-wing defense of Europe, which is precisely anti-enlightenment. Then we have uh, something that I sometimes call, but not because it's good, just to make it clear, soft fascism. Not this Nazi-like self-destructive, but this, this is basically, I think, the elementary definition of fascism. You know only capitalist market dynamic works, but you are aware of social destruction that this causes. So you combine capitalist dynamic with a strong state founded in some ethnic, religious, traditional ideology. It's China now. Xi Jinping recently said we have to teach young people what? Uh, uh, not Mao, but uh, Confucian tradition, Modi in India, Erdogan, uh, 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 Putin in his own way. I think if you ask me what's the most probable outcome, it's this one. So uh, I don't believe in BRICS. BRICS de facto means not really multicentric, but a couple of centers. Russia, China, Europe is not so strong, United States, which will, each of them will try to create its own small empire. And so again, I think we no longer can draw a line where does this lead. We can, then there is ecological catastrophe, will it happen or not, and so on and so on. And, uh, this is why the key to all this is in a very ironic way. When people ask me, but what are you? I define myself as a moderately conservative communist. Why? Communist because, let's be serious, new crises will explode uh, after COVID, other viral crises, maybe wars, who knows what will happen to our environment. And for me, it's not even some big theory. It's kind of a primal evidence, self-obvious thing, that we will need more collaboration, stronger than market. Now people tell me, you are utopian. I tell them, no, look at COVID. I have quite good memories of COVID. Do you know what two big bad guys, both Trump and uh, and uh, uh, Boris Johnson. They had to do things which were allowed by Constitution only in extreme warlike uh, circumstances, that you can directly, bypassing the market, order some industries what to do. I think we have to prepare for this type of emergency state, because if we don't do it still, as Lorenzo would have put it, in the tradition of enlightenment, then the right-wingers will do it, you know. So again, uh, the crucial thing is that there, I'm not saying everything is contingent. No, there is one narrative line, but it works like what they call in quantum mechanics uh, collapse. R when after a thing happens, retroactively it appears as necessary. No, my beloved 
example from love, you walk on the street, sorry for the stupidity, you sleep on a banana and there is a lady there who helps you to stand up. And then it may happen you discover it's the love of your life, you know. And then you automatically read all your life as leading to that point. So the key point is, finish with this simple progressism, uh, becoming aware that we are now literally in a state of superpositions. The last attempt, which was Fukuyama, end of history, failed, and Fukuyama, did you get him here? He's not a, he doesn't understand Hegel, of, of course, American, Chinese, cannot, or whatever, Japanese, but, but he saw this clearly, and now, do you know that in the last elections he supported Bernie Sanders? He is honest enough here, you know. So, again, uh, I think it's not enough, now I will try to answer very briefly to your question in a more philosophical way. It's not enough to say, okay, Natural sciences tell us what nature is. History is totally different. No, I think that if we want to take seriously the contingency, the openness of history, at some level, of course, different from spiritualism, we have to locate it already in nature. We need a different notion of nature because today, even Nature, natura, is no longer what it was. Traditionally, our notion of nature was a stability, you know, like the usual anti-humanist rigging of ecology. Nature was okay, stable, uh, homeostasis reproducing itself. Then we humans emerged and we, uh, in our hubris we destabilized it. I, my answer is sorry, are you crazy? What is now our source of energy? Oil, coal. Can you even imagine what mega ecological catastrophes had to happen on our Earth so that we have all these reserves of energy? So my answer to insult deep ecologists is, ecologists is, yes, there is mother nature, but mother nature is not a caring mother, but a dirty, corrupted bitch, no? Like, to accept this, openness, I think, and I will try to develop in today's talk, in what a perfect way quantum mechanics proposes a kind of, even, I'm not afraid of this term, ecology, uh, sorry, uh, ontological foundation of a different relationship to history.